Tell us about your poster that you presented at Arvo 2016. So I did, um, I did some research on patient compliance with the AREDS recommendations mm -hmm. in folks with and without macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we st I started observing in, in clinic that a lot of patients were taking I vitamins mm -hmm. or AREDS vitamins without um, indication to be on them. So I was curious how many patients were doing that and kind of maybe try to tease out some motivations, how much they were spending, and which vitamins they preferred. Well, this is clearly a very important area. Uh, and recently there's been some controversy uh, and associated with uh, what people are taking and what they thought they were taking. And you're probably aware of the situation with CVS Pharmacy that was advertising a brand comparable to AREDS too. Um, how important do you think this is, and based on your research, what the perception of quality and the perception of value with regard to supplements for AREDS? So we, we found that there were a large percentage of people taking vitamins without meeting criteria. So roughly 25% were taking vitamins appropriately, the other 75% didn't meet criteria and we're taking them unnecessarily and without any justification there's no study to prove that they would improve their overall vision or prevent them from progressing to macular degeneration. Um, as far as the brand preference, um, there was a study done at, in 2011 where they looked at the 11 most purchased brands in the United States and only four of those 11 contained the actual formula including the medication or the nutri nutrients and dosage as recommended and studied in AREDS. So we found that 70% of those folks, of the folks we interviewed, weren't even taking a brand that had the accurate um, ingredients and dosage. So what do you think the greatest challenges are in getting more of the at-risk population to take and AREDS to approved formula? So a lot of the patients we interviewed um, reported, you know, seeing commercials, the reasons for starting where they had a family member who they witnessed uh, suffering from macular degeneration and, and there may be a little bit of a fear component not wanting to experience that themselves. But the largest percentage of patients reported that their primary eye doctor recommended that they take the vitamin. So I think ultimately the responsibility lies with the provider to not only provide them with um, appropriate recommendations, but then also to explain to them, you know, um, which vitamins they, they should take and um, continue to follow those patients and make sure that they keep them up to, up to speed. In your study, did you control for other vitamin use? We asked patients if they were taking other vitamins, but we specifically asked them if they were taking a vitamin as well for their eyes. So there were 80% of the patients that were taking an eye vitamin were also taking a vitamin for an other, another reason, whether for general health and well-being or for a specific uh, systemic uh, condition. Uh, but we mostly wanted to look at, if we assume that, that uh, we followed the AREDS recommendations by the book, um, how much influence did people taking vitamins that didn't meet that criteria have on the societal uh, burden of costs? Right. So what were the overall conclusions of your study? So we found that because patients were taking vitamins when they didn't have meat criteria or were taking a vitamin supplement that wasn't necessarily tested or, or proven by AREDS that the, needed, the number needed to treat increased to, from 17 to 218. Um, and that the cost burden that for uh, patients reported roughly 40 to $60 per quarter uh, expenditure on vitamins um, ends up being roughly anywhere between 200 dollars and $600,000 per each quality of life year gained um, from the AREDS vitamin use. And that's primarily diluted and the, the value or the cost increased because patients we're using the vitamins who shouldn't have been on them and diluting the overall effectiveness of them. How, what were the variables that you used to calculate the quality? So we looked at, um, we looked at utility values uh, reported by uh, Brown, Melissa Brown and Gary Brown in 2003, which uh, gave a utility value for specific visual acuities. And so we looked at initial visual acuities and the AREDS was 
ARIDS only included people who had visual acuity better than 2032. So we took 2020, 2015, 2025, and 2032 vision and to see what utility value they preserved by taking the vitamin supplement. And using those, we could calculate a quality of life year. And so then from that, we were able to multiply the number of years you needed to maintain that vision and the cost that people were spending on the vitamins in order to uh, achieve that. And so that's how we came up with the cost utility. What was the age distribution? Um, we had, we enrolled patients as young as 45. Uh, one lady, she was 45, she was taking AREDs for cataracts. She thought that would maybe help her cataracts. So there's a little bit of fluctuation in why people were taking them. And as patients as old as 99 were on the AREDs vitamins. So we talk about the utility value. Uh, there's obviously a higher value associated with people that are working versus people that are retired. Did you segment these? We, uh, I did not. Um, when uh, the study first came out, so they, there were two methods that um, Brown reported on acquiring utility values, and we right. used the, the time trade-off method where okay. it calculated the number of years people were willing to sacrifice for a specific utility value. And right. What would your next steps be in terms of further taking this research forward? Well, I'd like to publish it, uh, get it out there, and, and, and this is a great step to get it um, available for people to see. But uh, I think, importantly, having physicians be aware that um, even though vitamins may at first glance appear benign, that there's still, there's always risk to any type of medical treatment. And we found that 86% of the people who were smokers didn't factor into the fact that they were smoking when they picked their vitamin supplement, and that places them at a risk. Um, I think uh, as a provider, you know, we should inform our patients about not smoking, about exercising and a healthy diet, but not necessarily recommending eye vitamins unless they're indicated. So you would support the notion that it's called vitamin because <laughs> it's minimal, it's not, Correct. it's not called Vitamax. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, excellent. Dr. Anderson, thank you so much for joining us. It's hey, a great study. It's my pleasure. Very, very helpful to a lot of people, our, our, our viewers especially. Thank you very much. Thank you.